first start your compressor before you start your compressor, you want to check your oil level. Okay? There's this little sight window. Everybody should probably look at this. Okay. Okay. There's two lines, a low and a higher, a minimum and maximum. You want it somewhere in between there. It's a synthetic oil. It's not just any random 10W40 off the shelf. Uh, up here, you, there's a breaker box which goes up to another breaker box. So, in an emergency, you got three places to shut it off. Up there, up here, up here, and your emergency shut off switch. So, before you open any of these, you want to make sure that it's off. And the reason for that is because there's things that you could lose fingers or digits, whatever. At each one of your stages, in between the stages, it'll show your pressure. Notice this one goes up to 200, and then as you go back to your second stage, it goes up to 600. Your third stage goes up to 1500. Your fourth stage goes up to 7000. So, the reason you have those is for diagnosis, you know, if there's a problem between your first and second stage. Uh, tech could come over here and say, okay, well, we're building up 120 PSI on the first stage, but we're not getting to 300 on our second stage, so there's where our problem lies, somewhere between there. Kind of a little technical, you guys probably don't even need to know that, but okay. thought I'd share it with you. Uh, right here is your condensate drain. I would say once a month or whatever. Uh, take a cup, put it underneath here, it'll fill up. You know, you might get a couple drops or you might get quite a bit. Being that there's a drain there, can we run a hose and just... It's and just water. Into that drain there? Yep. Just leave it open? Uh, you could, except for there's no hole down through the, the base. Oh, I But see. you could leave, put a, ho a hose on here right. and, you know, drain it, run into your drain, and then tuck the hose away when you're done. Okay. I don't see a problem with that. There is a teeny bit of oil in it, but it's not much. So this morning I went up and turned on, or when I got here, I went and turned on your, your big breaker in the breaker box, and that one was already on. And I came over here and turned on your compressor. So what it'll do is it does this little warm up and comes to the main screen. You follow these lines, it shows you what's happening. So it comes over here, goes to the fill your cylinders or directly fill to your two um, tanks you put in here. So here's your main screen, tells you uh, when it was last running what your final pressure is. I'll actually read live pressure to you, so right now you're at 5781 in the system and it might slowly drop because of the lines. Um, most of the lines are airtight but you'll still have some seepage through filters or what have you. <clears throat> so essentially, all you have to do is come over here and turn this on. If your, your cylinders are full, it probably won't need to be ran if you're just going to fill one cylinder. Your compressor, that is. Okay. Um, but these regulators here will tell you how much pressure you're going to put into your cylinder. This regulator operates both this and your care class. The care type um, So whatever you set this at, it's going to tell that and in your SCB area what pressure you're running. So turning it to the right, we'll increase the pressure. See that one going up? So all we did is, is we told uh, the cylinders that we need to raise the pressure that we're going to fill to that and your BA room off of this. And you can adjust the pressure that comes out of your hose reel doing the same thing. Watch this gauge here. It'll go up as we turn it. Okay. That's just redundant then? Basically. Just redundant, yep. Uh, Having your compressor on, once I crack this, it'll probably start up. But this is telling you that now instead of filling from the compressor, you're going to fill from the two storage tanks. You don't have cascade controls. This is only a, um, a quick filling station, I guess you could say. So, just to like 
offhand question, where the dials, you're recommending them to be turned down, <laughs> which is something I don't think we do at Station 41, but we probably should be. It's just a good habit to get into. The whole idea behind it is that you can't accidentally overfill. Um, you're probably not in a situation where you have a lot of low-pressure cylinders around, but... We have none, but... Yeah. Sure. So, it's not, you know, necessarily, hey, don't do this, but it's just a good idea. It saves them a wear and tear. Pressure behind those seals can make them, you know, wear out. Okay, so... Um, it's just a filograph. It tells you about what you can do for cylinders. So, you have two ASME cylinders in the back. So with two ASME cylinders, you fall across the bulk filling at 4,500 PSI, and you're at 66 cubic feet in one of these, uh, you can do four. So without having your compressor on, you could fill four of those cylinders okay. around pretty close to fill. What point does it kick on usually? At what pressure? Yeah, what pressure. Some of them are set around 5,000. Some of them are set at 45. Just depends on where it's set. Once you go uh, open this cylinder up, it'll equalize the pressure that you have built in your lines from your compressor. You'll see this go, this gauge go up so everything equalizes. So now you're running off of your cylinders in the back. Your compressor's not on, it's off. So you could take one of your cylinders um, put it in the location, hook it up, and fill it. In the bottom here, you can adjust your height for cylinders. <clears throat> CGA 347 is your common connector. Um, these little O-rings right here sometimes will go bad. I recommend having a few extras on hand just in case. But there's no air in the line because we haven't got it, our regulator pressure built up yet. And no more open one of these. So throw your cylinder in. Make your connection. Make sure your uh, purge valve is closed. It doesn't need to be real tight. There's a, there's a gasket, nylon gasket in there. So you don't want to compress it too much, just enough so it doesn't let air go through. And then open up your cylinder. So we're just under 3,000 3, PSI there. <coughs> Shut your door. Will it fill with the door open? It will not fill with the door open. Um, so down here you're going to build up the pressure of what you want it. We're going to fill it to 4,500, right? Unless you're doing something different. <clears throat> 4,500. I like to crack these because you don't want to hot fill. If you open it all the way, it's going to hot fill. It'll uh, gas rushing through it causes friction, which causes it to warm up, which also causes the air to expand. So it'll tell you that you have higher pressure in there than you do. An uh, hour after it's sitting and cools down, you'll lose that pressure. So 4,500 PSI, we talked about this already, but 4,500 PSI, you get it real hot, uh, quick, let it cool for an hour, you're probably going to lose two, 300 PSI. So, um, crack it. You see your gauge, this is telling you how much you're, you're filling it at. Yes. Mm -hmm. So now, if you came over here and opened this, it shuts off your air. No air is getting passed. That's the safety feature that power is built in. So that's pretty much the basics of how your system works. So all I did right there is just drain the air out of your hose rail and your PA ring. So, so we're always right. filling from those two ASME bottles and never directly from the compressor? You can fill directly from the compressor. You how do you have that? to you do four bottles. Well, yeah, but it's still bypassing through the, the bottle.
taking out that moisture that we filled in that ACD when we talked about draining. Pretty much basics of it. When you're done filling your cylinder, I think we all know how to do this. Pop it open. Turn your cylinder off. Make sure this valve is closed. So the green button next to the red one up there is, is that safe? Um, that's the on for the compressor. So if it's off, and then you drop below a certain pressure, will it still automatically kick on? It should automatically kick on. That's just to forcefully turn it on. Well, if, if there's no need for it to turn on, then you hit the power button, it's not going to come on until you get below that pressure. Yeah. The safest bet is to either hit the emergency stop out off or that switch up there if you're not going to be using it. But so, power compressors like to be ran, so yeah, it's up to you if you want to turn it on or not. Your big thing is going to be washing these gauges. So once this drops below, it's, I think it's probably right at four, five grand, it's going to kick on. Yeah, if you have the valve open and your compressor on. And then we dial up the once regulated this, pressure. Once this line drops below that 5,000, your compressor will kick on if your green button's on, even with this shut. Um, the other big thing is these are YVA kits, YVA valves. They have a nylon o-ring behind them so you don't want to get on here with you know whoever your muscle guy is in the department um, eight finger tight you don't need to have it so we're going to be turning that down every when we're done using it for yeah. necessarily the day but after we're done filling bottles a series of them will turn that down to zero um, it's going to give you your, your longest life of them turn this to zero turn that to off 